okay. Good morning. Good morning, Ranjampa de Gongcho Sampola. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. This is our very warm welcome to be our distinguished guest on Rumsum Buddhist channel. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, Ranjampa, I'm very curious because after looking at your resume, it's a very uh, impressive, distinguished resume. Um, so I just want to, uh, I just like to invite you to tell us um, why you became a, but uh, why you was, uh, why you decide to choose to become a monk at the age of twelve. Uh, uh, when I was uh, very young, I didn't know, uh, you know, the how is uh, a monk's life, but. I was very interested to become a monk. And uh, maybe due to my mom, my mom loves us to become a uh, monk. And uh, all uh, her sons become monk. And uh, so when I saw great masters, I admired them. So uh, in future, if I will be like them, you know, I'm very happy. I used to talk, I used to think about that for many times. That's why I become monk since uh, uh, very young age. Yeah. I see. Um, so why Nyingmapa first? Uh, there's no reason, but uh, my parents, you know, are Nimaba, and also uh, uh, my monastery is uh, Tatang Monastery. So maybe that's why I become monk in Tatang Monastery. That's why maybe I think I become Nima. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, did you still recall? As at your early years of a novice monk, how do you feel being there? Because, uh, you know, at the age of 12, that was the age normally for anyone to be together with his or her family, or her fa uh, his or her um, family, friend, uh, friends, relatives to be around it. But now you, uh, you were like in a monastery as a novice monk. So was there anyone taking care of you? Did you feel lonely? Tell us about that. Uh, yes. Um, I was very happy in uh, uh, my monastery, in Tartan Monastery, uh, because uh, I had many uh, friends, uh, you know, the same age of mine. And also I stayed there with some of my brothers. So I have five brothers. So some of them, you know, looked up to me. That's why I was very happy. I never ever feel lonely during I was staying in my monastery in Tatan. Were you naughty or just very nice boy at that time? You know, because I, I met so many novice monks in uh, in my monastery. They were just so naughty. I was very very naughty. I, okay. I used to fight uh, many, uh, you know, the boys. I was very interested in fighting. <laughs> so no reason, uh, you know, means, you know, uh, uh, I didn't get angry with uh, of them, but with them, but I just, I thought it was, you know, funny. It was so fun, that's why. Yeah, but were you often the winner when you fight with them? Sorry? Did you win very often when you fought with uh, your fellow novice monks, with other boys? Yeah. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Some, yeah. Yeah. You mean sometimes? Sometimes you may I not think... Always, yeah. No, uh, sometimes, yeah. You know, uh, I mean, uh, uh, maybe I think I was a little bit brave. Almost I won. 
because I know how to fight. I knew how to fight them, with them, you know. Then uh, I think when, you know, our very young age, if we did something, many things, this is, uh, you know, sometimes it helps us to do something in our future because we have more experience than others. That's why now when I, you know, they look back, think back. So uh, I think it's very useful. Will you breathe? Uh, will you have uh, will you have the same bravery when you in terms of studying Buddha Dharma at such young age? Yeah, that's why maybe you know the after that uh, when I uh, start to study Dharma, you know I can do how do you say it? Uh, be patient. I can be patient to study Dharma or continually. That's why really I studied. Um, Dharma very hard. Maybe I think before I used to fight with little boys. That's maybe I think one reason. What's the connection between studying very hard and fighting other boys? What's the connection? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, because if you become uh, brief, then you can do anything if you want. That's why. What was a typical day like uh, in your monastery? I mean, when you first joined Data Monastery as a young novice uh, monk, what was a typical day like? Tell us about that. Uh, typical, uh, that time, you know, the... I was very young, so uh, I couldn't go outside due to my old brothers and also others. And uh, even though I really wanted to go to outside to watch movies, but they didn't let me go. So I think I clearly remember about that. I really wanted to go outside to watch movies at night because I heard the sound of movie when I just, you know, the, uh, uh, went outside of my uh, house. So I remember it clearly. Other, maybe I think I don't, ha I don't have any problems, difficult. I think. Uh, I mean, when did you get up uh, in Dadha Monastery and uh, how many hours uh, did you have to study? And then when did you go to bed? Uh, maybe I cannot remember clearly, but uh, maybe six, seven hours. Maybe I think I got up at seven or six or seven like that. Then uh, when I went to bed about at uh, maybe nine or 10. Oh, I see. So basically each day, at least seven to eight hours of study. Yeah. Was it too challenging for a young boy? Uh, uh, pardon? Was it a big challenge for you at that time, studying so many hours? Since you were naughty, you want to go outside always? Uh, uh, you know, uh, I like sleeping. So uh, it was very difficult if I, uh, you know, they didn't sleep for a long time. So I remember that that time sometimes I, you know, they didn't good in the Philippines. So maybe I think then uh, I had to challenge about that. Yeah. How about your um, performance in your monastery? I mean, when in the examination, how was your score? 
uh, what do you say? I, I cannot understand. How about your performance as a young novice monk in your monastery examination? Did examination. You examination. Yeah. How about your examination results at, at your monastery? Uh, no, I think my examination, uh, you know, there was not good because uh, even though I studied only two years in that monastery, you know, only two yeah. years, that time also, you know, the, my uh, age was very young. So I didn't study very well in uh, that monastery. But after I came back to, uh, after I went, uh, you know, the, went to India, then really I start to study okay. very, very hard. That's how you went to, uh, how you joined Nanjuling Monastery in India. Yeah, so uh, uh, first, that time, you know, uh, it was very easy to join Nanjuling Monastery because my cousin brother was there. So then I went to Tata Monastery. Then, uh, yeah, so I could join. I'm sorry, Tata Monastery, Namjuli Monastery, uh, very easily. At that time, uh, his holiness, also, Pino, you know, yes, yeah. Also, Pino you know, Rinpoche the, was there. Yes, yes. his yeah. holiness, uh, Pino Rinpoche was there. So I was very, very happy to, you know, the, uh, see him. Yeah. What was the difference between uh, life in Nanjoling Monastery with that of Data Monastery? Uh, for me, it's totally different because when I was in Data Monastery, I just enjoyed everything. I didn't, you know, they studied very well. I told you that, you know, I played with other boys. And after I joined uh, Namjoli Monastery, you know, I had to study uh, Dharma for at least, maybe I think at least for 14, 15 hours every day, <clears throat> except uh, in the uh, Saturday and Sunday. So it was very, very hard. And uh, also I didn't have any, you know, siblings who looked after me. And uh, I didn't have money. And uh, also I missed my family members, especially my mom. So it's a very, it was very hard. But, you know, after I, joined Namtuli Monastery, really, I think I changed my life, totally changed. After I joined uh, Namtuli Monastery, uh, you know, there, I did my best for myself. Which means how many years you have to be away from your mother and other family members? Uh, sorry? How many years you have to be away from your mother and the other family members when you uh, went to India to join Nanjuling? Yeah, for many, many years, for a long time, because uh, I have been to India since 2000. Okay, yeah, there must be a big challenge for you to be yeah. alone in a different yeah. country. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what was your biggest uh, harvest in Nanjoling? I mean, what do you get most in that, in your uh, vigorous, ambitious study uh, in Nanjoling? So that the... Uh... I studied Madhimaka of uh, Nima tradition and uh, uh, Vinaya and uh, Abhidharma 
And uh, yeah, then also I studied pottery, history of uh, uh, Tibetan Buddhism, then so on. I see. What interests you most among all these uh, topics or subjects? Uh, my favorite subject uh, was uh, Madimaka and uh, pottery. Yeah. If we if we ask you what is Madimaka uh, about, can you tell us in a very brief way? How can you summarize? Yeah. Okay, the uh, uh, the main all uh, the main object of Madimaka is uh, emptiness. We call it in Tibetan Uma. Uma means middle way. Yeah. So when I uh, practiced or study about the subject, then I feel uh, you know it helps me. A lot. Anyway, I was very interested in studying uh, about Madimaka, or uh, I was very interested in thinking about emptiness. That's why Madimaka was my favorite subject when I was in uh, Namtoli Monastery. Yeah. At uh, Nanjoling, what was your impression of? your teachers and your fellow um, classmates. What was your impression of them? Uh, sorry? What was your um, impression? What do you think of your stu uh, teachers and students, uh, I mean, classmates at Nanjoling? What yeah, do you think of, course, of them? Yeah, of course, all my teachers you know, are very great teachers. And uh, because they, you know, they teach Buddhist philosophy very, very well. And uh, all also my classmates are very good because they helped me to study Buddhist philosophy. Because we always discussed about Buddhist philosophy in class, also outside of class. So yeah, they are, they were very very great. So I never you know forget all my teachers. No, only uh, Namtoli uh, Monastery teachers. So, you know also Ripongoma Monastery teachers, also Jonsal Monastery teachers. All my you know Dharma teachers are very very wonderful. So I never ever forget for their teaching, you know, yeah, their kindness. So did you sometimes also fight with some of your classmates, like what you did in uh, Data Monastery? No, never. No. Yeah. Because you were so busy, no time to fight. Yeah, I was very busy. Also, that time I thought, uh, you know, the, for myself. I mean, I was alone. So I thought now I left my family to study Buddhist philosophy. So now I came to India to study Buddhist philosophy, you know. So I shouldn't, you know, waste time, you know. Even though I missed my family members, especially my mom. Also, they, of course, were missing me. But I challenge all of them to study Buddhist philosophy in India. That's why, you know, the, I studied Buddhist philosophy very hard. I see. I so think how, uh, yeah. I cannot remember uh, to go to bed. Uh, until uh, 12 or 1 a.m. Almost when I went to bed uh, was uh, about at uh, 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. 
that was normally the case uh, with your life at Nanjuling? No, actually, schedule is uh, we need to uh, study at 5 a.m. to uh, 11 p.m. Wow. But wow. Uh, then, I, yeah, for, uh, for example, uh, uh, if I tell a little bit uh, about the schedule of Namtuli Monastery yeah. and Statue, so uh, Five to seven, five five a.m. to seven a.m. Uh, is uh, self study. Mm -hmm. uh, six seven. Then uh, seven to eight thirty uh, breakfast. Uh, eight thirty to uh, eleven morning class. And eleven to uh, one o'clock. Uh, no, yeah, oh yeah, lunch time. And uh, one p.m. to uh, three thirty review class for uh, basic class first, then second, third fourth class. So there are other students who don't have class uh, study for themselves. And then uh, 3, uh, 3 to 30, uh, 3 to 3 30 uh, um, uh, tea break. Uh, 3 30 to 4 30 evening class. 4 30 to Five break time, five to six uh, debate time, debate class, six to seven thirty dinner time, seven thirty to uh, seven thirty to nine thirty self study, nine thirty to uh, ten thirty tea break. 10.30 to 11, self-study. Then uh, 11, we have to light off. Oh, the we light has to, to be off. Yeah. Yeah, we have to switch off light, all lights. Then you cannot use, uh, you know, the light, but you can use uh, table light, small light. So, but almost to the students after, you know, 11 p.m. study for themselves because we need to memorize many textbooks. You know that we have to read uh, a lot of uh, textbooks, and uh, that's why. So yeah, we need to study very hard. Not easy. Almost, I think it's uh, similar. This. Uh, um, schedule is similar to uh, also uh, Zonsal Monastery. I mean, schedule is a little bit different, but also they uh, study Dharma or Buddhist philosophy for many, many hours every day. And, uh, but uh, uh, their schedules are very different from uh, Jipongomo Monastery. Dipongomo Monastery uh, uh, has more debate class. I mean, you know, from uh, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. debate class, morning debate class. And uh, then they have uh, class because their classes are different because uh, they, their students need to go to the teacher's house. You know, they don't have very uh, special like uh, classrooms. And uh, uh, after that also, uh, uh, they have to work in a uh, um, monastery restaurant, shopping, uh, others. Yeah, 
uh, for monastery. And uh, um, also from 9, no, 7 p.m. to 11 p.m., also they have debate class. So uh, at least they have, they, you know, they have uh, debate class at least five hours every day, except Monday. Monday is, you know, they have Monday off. Yeah. So after that also they, re, you know, they memorize many textbooks. And of course they study for themselves for a long term. So yeah. also, you know, they study for many, many hours for every day. So it's not easy. You know, I have been meeting many different people who didn't know the schedule of monasteries. They uh, thought, you know, monks just practice meditation and chanting, that's all. But, <laughs> you know, <laughs> You know, uh, Tibetan, you know, the, the monasteries, Tibetan tradition monasteries, you know, are very, how do you say it, uh, um, monks, maybe I think Tibetan, uh, you know, the uh, tradition monks are very, you know, difficult, not easy. I mean, we have to study for many years, for a long time, many hours for every day. Yeah, so it's different from their thought. Talking about Nyingma Pa, as, especially as the old translation school, uh, we know that uh, one tradition of Nyingma Pa is that uh, uh, also enough uh, focus is put on meditation as well. Um, yeah. But during your years uh, of study at Nanjoli, how much time did you also devote to meditation each day? Uh, uh, for me, uh, you know, the uh, first I said that the, you know, I practice meditation for myself uh, uh, when I was in my room. But uh, it was a little bit difficult because we have, you know, room meet. Sometimes we, that time, uh, uh, four, five monks sit in the same room. But I uh, was very interested in thinking about emptiness, also impermanent. So I think it was practice meditation. Practice meditation means, you know, like uh, don't need close eyes, keep straight, focus on object continually. It's also part of meditation, but meditation means like you know practice, you know, uh, with the philosophy in our mind continually. So I think, yeah, it was practice meditation. Then after. Uh, 2016, then I start, you know, the practice shamatha. I started to practice shamatha. So then, because that time, after that, I stayed alone in my room. So then it was easy to focus. It, it was easy to concentrate my mind on my object continually peacefully, normally. So during, I was stay the, in the uh, Dipong Goma Monastery, Namtroni Monastery, and uh, Zongsa Monastery. So it was very difficult to practice meditation because one, I was very, very busy. I didn't have time to concentrate my mind on object continually, peacefully, normally like that. The other reason, you know, the I told you, you know, I had, you know, uh, room meat. 
And uh, also, as you know, our tradition, you know, usually we don't practice meditation in front of people. So <laughs> that, that's why also maybe, yeah. Uh, since you also spent some time in Thailand, I mean, for Theravada Buddhism, from very early age as a novice monk, the the meditation was part of their training, uh, basically from day one. Um, then from uh, in comparison for Tibetan Buddhism, especially in the early days, early days of study, always class after class, Lots of reading, memorizing, debating. So, yeah, wh why not like uh, Theravada Buddhism, like in Thailand or in Myanmar, uh, meditation was from day one part of their training. So what's why such difference, in your opinion? Uh, I think... Uh, uh... I that time I couldn't speak English because uh, uh, I started to learn ABCD in 2016 in uh, Thailand. But uh, I visited many my friends. You know the I mean my friends. You know the Thai monks, and um, they didn't have anything in their. Uh, you know, the rooms. I mean, they had some clothes and uh, ball and uh, other, maybe some, uh, maybe reading books or text books. And, uh, you know, the very simple bed. And, uh, but they always practice meditation, you know, uh, but their meditation is a little bit different from Nima tradition because uh, maybe I think Nima tradition almost, uh, you know, the Nima monks, you know, they focus on Dzogchen. So when uh, Nima monks uh, uh, practice meditation with open eyes, but they, you know, they, when they practice meditation, you know, they uh, they close their eyes and they concentrate their mind on object continually, you know, normally. This is a little bit different because we don't need focus on only one object. We can see, you know, we can hear, we can touch, you know. Then also, we can practice meditation, you know, the uh, read, hearing, you know, the scene. So I think it's a little bit different. Yeah. At yeah. Nandoling, after how many years will you, uh, would uh, a student monk there start to practice meditation? After how many years of study, uh, reading, memorizing, debating? Then the meditation yeah. will be part of his daily practice. Arranged uh, by Nantoling, the monk. Yeah. Yeah, Namtuli has, uh, uh, you know, the also different rigid, you know, uh, how do you say, it? maybe class. Because uh, they, uh, after they finish uh, their, uh, how do you say, the study, Dharma, and then they have to teach uh, Buddhist philosophy for students. Then after that, they can reach it for three and three years, three months, and three days continually. They cannot go outside during the retreat. How long will be the retreat? Is the traditional three year, three month, and three day uh, uh, retreat for Tibetan monk? Yes, yeah. <clears throat> What did you, well, I, I couldn't hear you. Can you I mean, repeat it again? When will you start your traditional three year, three month, and three day retreat? No, I haven't done it yet. But I, you know, the, uh, I mean, you know, Namtuli has 
you know, the richest like class. That's why okay. the monks who join the retreat, they practice meditation continually for three years yeah. without going outside. Yeah. Normally, for monk and nun feeling, uh, how many years of study is needed before they can be qualified for the such traditional three-year retreat? I think they. Uh, have to study for many, many years. Before they can join this traditional three-year retreat? No, you can join uh, uh, the three retreat. Uh, we thought, I would say, join the statute of Namjuli Monastery. But uh, it, I think it's not very easy, uh, but you uh, have to ask the leaders of Namjuli Monastery. After years of study at Namjuli, why you decided to transfer to Zongsa Institute for Sakyapa study? Because, you know, I like to think for myself. I like to do anything on my own. So even though my lineage is Nima, but I was very interested to study, you know, the uh, other traditions teaching. And uh, also I heard, you know, Tema Richter is very special text or special Buddhist logic very famous. So I really wanted to study Thema Richter. And uh, also I wanted to know the tradition of Sakya lineage, also Gaelic lineage. That's why I joined you know, Zonsar Monastery to study uh, Thema Richter. Also I, you know, of course, uh, studied Madimaka of uh, uh, Sakya tradition. So, yeah, it was very interesting. Yeah. And then, after more than one year at uh, Zongsa Monastery for Sak study of Sakyapa, then what made you uh, change your mind to transfer to Geluba? I mean, at uh, starting your study at uh, Jipong. You a monastery. Uh, first, I joined Namjuli Monastery uh, to study Buddhist philosophy. After a few years, I went to Zonsar. Then, yeah, Dipongoma uh, Monastery. Uh, so, because also same reason, you know, that each of lineages has very special skill or ability. So Gelu uh, tradition has, you know, very special deep skill. So I was were also very interested in deep And uh, so there, that's why I joined Jipong Goma Monastery to study Buddhist philosophy, logic, Madimaka, because uh, Jipong Goma Monastery has, uh, how do you say it, Panja uh, Paramita class for six years continually. So I think uh, other like uh, uh, monasteries doesn't have like that. I haven't heard. Maybe I think possible. Uh, some of them has, but that's why, you know, I thought, you know, the Buddhist, as you know, Buddhist, you know, Tibetan Buddhism has the five major texts, you know, we called, you know, Zhongshin Kapunga. So all Tibetan, you know, the lineages are studying the 
five major texts. But they different to focus. I mean, for example, uh, Nima tradition, you know, I think, I, I'm not sure, uh, in my opinion, you know, the focus more on Madimaka among them. And uh, Gelu uh, tradition focuses on Panja Paramita and uh, uh, Paramana, Buddhist logic. So, and also <clears throat> Sakya also maybe I think similar. So that's why I wanted to study the five major in detail very well. That's why I joined different lineages, different monasteries to study Buddhist philosophy. Yeah. For example, uh, talking about the um, one of the most famous Tibetan Buddhist classics, uh, which is the Way of Bodhisattva by Shantideva. Uh, yeah. About the yeah about the last chapter on wisdom, I understand I understand that Nimapa and Gelupa have quite different views on how to interpret the last chapter on wisdom uh, by Shantideva of his classics, The Way of Bodhisattva. So, what do you think of this difference? Uh, I think uh, uh, on one hand, uh, they are a little bit different because, for example, uh, the Nima, uh, like uh, says, you know, the, for example, this table is not exists as we see, as we feel. You know, we can say directly it's not exist. This table is not, you know, the uh, uh, table, you know, uh, but uh, Gelu, uh, but not say like that. You know, this table is exist on the table, but uh, when we check the table, it cannot found the same. So, uh, but the other hand, I think almost similar, but different explain. You know, because. Uh, uh, in my opinion, because I studied with the philosophy uh, in the Dipong uh, Goma Monastery, Namjuli Monastery, and uh, also Dongsen Monastery uh, for many years, but almost actually similar. You know, for example, all our destination is same, but different ways. For example, if uh, we want to go to Japan, then uh, Japan is only uh, one. There is only one Japan in the world. You know, destination is Japan, but we can go to Japan through different ways. Through maybe I think China, India, maybe Nepal or the United States. So that's why I think actually different, you know, method to become Buddha or to get enlightenment, but actually it's similar. Yeah, but if we also, you know, the practice meditation and detail, then maybe a little bit different. When an outsider of Buddhism, it's very easy for them to question. Since um, you mentioned that, you know, uh, among the three sects you have studied, they are more similar than being different uh, between each other. Then why such differentiation or establishment of, uh, of, of different sects if uh, we are all studying Similarly, the same Buddha's words. Why is so many differentiation of different sects, which can make our life much more complicated? Yes, but uh, uh, actually, you know, the in my opinion, we need to realize emptiness, 
natural mind. But it's not easy to understand the meaning of natural mind or emptiness. That's why Buddha explains, you know, with different words, you know, the different methods. That's why I think the, uh, how do you say, they become more and more, you know, teachings. Actually, we don't need uh, a lot of like this uh, text books. If you know directly the natural mind or emptiness, that's why you know there. When we become Buddha, means if we realize natural mind directly, that all. There is no special Buddha. You know, we call the you know, Sangye. Sang means wake up completely from ignorance. You know, Sang means. So that's why I think uh, there are a lot of, yeah, different words because we didn't and we cannot understand the emptiness. Later, you also taught at. Uh... Jonang, um, you know, one Jonang monastery as well as uh, uh, Gaji uh, monastery. So maybe you also study some of the Jonang and Gaji uh, Buddhist philosophies as well? Uh, no, I didn't uh, study uh, uh, in uh, uh, Jonang monastery and Gaji monastery, but I taught uh, pottery in uh, Jonang Monastery in Nepal. And uh, also I taught uh, Paramana or Buddhist logic in uh, Jipong Kajit Monastery, Rinchinpari Monastery. So I think uh, even though I haven't studied about Jonang you know, uh, tradition or Kagi tradition, but I am very interested in uh, how to say it, uh, reading or listening their tradition. I mean, I really believe, even though I didn't study their tradition, I very like, so now, I'm very happy because I, I sometimes I think you know I'm very lucky person. I'm very I like person because you know I got very great opportunity to study Buddhist philosophy in different languages like Jipungoma uh, Monastery, Namjuli Monastery, Jonsar Monastery, you know, Kaige Nima Sakya. And after that, also I got opportunity to teach in Chona Monastery and uh, Kaige Monastery. So now I feel all these five energies are my energy. You know, my monasteries, you know. So when I see, you know, any monks who are from, uh, you know, Nima, Kage, Sakya, Gelu, Chona, I feel very happy. They are my friends, my classmates, you know, like yeah. that. So. Yeah, also I received very great, you know, the math from their teachings, you know, their monasteries. So that's why I think you know, I'm a very lucky person, really. Something I appreciate uh, of myself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I greatly uh, rejoice, uh, Ranjampa. Um, but also, during your years of studying at and uh, studying and teaching at different monasteries with different lineages, you must have also met those who think that only their own lineage is the best, and they have the that's the only way to become uh, to reach Buddhahood. So, what do you think of people like that? Yeah, uh, you're right. Some uh, of them think like that, you know, because uh, uh, some almost of them, 
uh, didn't study others like tradition. So they first joined uh, their language, you know, their monastery. Then they studied only their tradition. That's why, you know, some of them, I cannot say all of them, okay, some of them, you know, they think, <laughs> okay, my lineage is the best lineage among them, you know. Also, my, like, um, uh, teaching, or maybe I think my view is the best one. So maybe others' views are wrong. So some of them think like that. It's totally wrong, I think. I mean, you know, maybe they, even though their views are different, but actually their views must, you know, the, uh, the way to become Buddha. I told you, for example, if we want to go to Japan, there are many different ways. Like uh, Nepal is the way to go to Japan. China is the way to go to Japan. And also India is the way to go to Japan. You know, we don't need go to Japan through only India. Some of them think, you know, the, the way go to Japan is only India or only Nepal. That's why it's wrong. If we uh, go to Japan through different ways, then you uh, will get more experience. You can meet more people. Similar, that's why I joined many different lineages. If you join different lineages, then you can see many different traditions, many different ideas you get, you know. So yeah, that's why I think people, because they don't join other religion. This is, I think, a problem. That's why they don't know others' view. They just think, okay, they just do, you know, study, you know, uh, some of them, you know, uh, study uh, textbooks. Some of them don't like to read others' books. Yeah, but now uh, it's much better. Now almost of uh, uh, monks, you know, I think are more and more interested in reading uh, other tradition, you know, books. Other books, yeah. But um, at the same time, uh, our life can be so short, can be so brief, and yeah. we have to focus. We have to focus um, one lineage to, uh, in order to really uh, know the nat nature of mind, in order to finally reach Buddhahood. So maybe practically speaking, for any uh, Buddhist practitioner, he or she has to focus on one lineage. Um, you know, especially when they don't start uh, their Buddhist study from the very early age, as you did. So, what would what would you, would you like to be? Uh, what will be your suggestion or advice for us who started learning Buddhism at middle age or even later? So, uh, I think. Uh... This only depends on different person. I mean, you know, uh, you know, each person has different personality. Maybe some of them is interested in practicing Gelug tradition. Some of them is interested in uh, like. Um, uh, interested in practicing like Nima, uh, Kaje, uh, Sakya, Chona, or maybe, you know, like that. So I cannot say this is the best because uh, Buddha's teachings are like medicine. We are like patients. Our suffering is like a disease. So, uh, so you know, the, our masters or Buddha uh, are like, you know, doctors. 
and our uh, classmates or Dharma friends like nurses. So we cannot say this medicine is best for everyone. You know, we have different, maybe I think suffering or different negative thoughts. So maybe that lineage is suitable for this person. Maybe this lineage is suitable for that person. If they want to practice more that tradition, maybe then it means this tradition suitable for them. That's I why see. I cannot say it's the best one. But for me, um. <laughs> I uh, interested practicing about emptiness and the compassion. I think the uh, doesn't matter, you know, the uh, that tradition or this tradition, you know, the Buddha's main teaching is compassion and emptiness. So that's why I like to practice compassion and emptiness for any time on the bus and car and on flight in my house or cafe or restaurant, wherever, whenever. You spent uh, more years at uh, Gelu Pass, uh, Drupam Monastery, than uh, Drupam Gomo in, Monastery. Uh, yeah, yeah, than in uh, uh, Ningma Pass, Nanjuling uh, Monastery. But later, I found I noticed that you again returned to Nanjuling to study uh, the Great Perfection or Juba Chimpo. So, which means that you still focus more on Ningma Pass rather than Gelupa. Yeah. Uh, I cannot say than uh, Nima, but than Gelupa, uh, but uh, I am very interested in practicing Zoba Chembo. You know, uh, because uh, I told you when I was uh, study Sutra, you know, my favorite subject was uh, Madimaka. Because uh, I was very interested in thinking about emptiness. Then after that, I received, you know, the uh, spiritual teachings from masters like Kenshin Tewan Yamso and Kenshin Namjo. Also, I received um, uh, the Tantara of uh, Nima tradition from uh, Kenamboche. Tashin Namjian, Kenanboche, Chimil Hender, Kenanboche, you know, uh, Yama Chimet, uh, you know, they are very, very great master, you know, great teachers. So after I received, you know, Mantra or Dzogchen, then now, you know, I am very interested in thinking about Dzogchen and Mantra. I cannot say I understand the doctrine and mantra, but even though I cannot understand of them, but I'm very interested in thinking about that. Well, you mentioned that you were always interested in compassion and emptiness, but for almost all of the Tibetan Buddhist sects, they all talk about these two topics. Yes, exactly. All you know, the Tibetan uh, lineages are practicing compassion and emptiness, the same. That's why, you know, I told you, you know, the, even though some of them think, you know, the, my lineage is best, their lineage is, uh, you know, the, not like that, but actually no this like that, like that, because all lineages are practicing you know, compassion and emptiness. Compassion and emptiness, practice compassion and emptiness, the, you know, the faith to become Buddha. That's why our like, yeah. destination is the same. Yes. So would you like to describe yourself as a uh, Rime or non-sectarian practitioner? Rime. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I like... Uh, to practice all, you know, the different traditions, yeah. Because, you know, 
when you practice or study different languages or tradition, then you get more experience, more skills, more maths to also practice Dharma. Because uh, uh, when we <coughs> cook, we need many different vegetables. If we just put uh, cabbage and your how do you maybe soap, it's not very interesting. Uh, not in, uh, like a tasty. It's not tasty. So if you put many different vegetables and soap, then it could be uh, you know more tasty. Similarly, yeah. uh, uh, when you practice, you know the Buddha's teaching. Buddha's teaching is profound and vast, so not easy to understand. If you study, you know the Dharma from different lineages, then you get different ideas to practice Buddha's teaching. I told you, for example, uh, Gelu lineage focus more. Uh, I mean, they study for many years about Madhimaka Ma and uh, Pandeparamita. So then you can get or understand more about Pandeparamita from Gelu lineage. The, also, Nima lineage, you know, the, uh, is very interested in study or practicing Madhimaka. If you join Nima lineage, then you also get maybe different skill. Practice uh, different skill of practice or uh, about Madhimaka. So similar like that. That's why I like to study all of them. The Renjampa, why did you uh, want to study English? Because uh, uh, before I wasn't interested in studying English, because uh, one day my teacher asked us, the students, the, are you interested in studying English? <laughs> All my classmates said yes, but except me. Then mm -hmm. everybody was shocked. Why, if you not interested in studying English, why are you learning English? Then I asked them, do you like to work? They said, no. Then why are you working? They said, you know, they, <laughs> it's very, how does it benefit for our life? The same. Even though I, I'm not interested in studying English, but English is very useful. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, why I, you know, the learning English? Mm -hmm. Because I have studied Buddhist philosophy and uh, Tibetan poetry and uh, yeah, so on for many years, continually. Then, uh, you know, our, maybe I think, responsibility is to help others with teaching. If you want to help others with teaching, then you maybe I think should learn other language. Then you can help more. Otherwise, if I didn't study English, then maybe I could, you know, the <laughs> share my teaching or experience of meditation with others, you know, the true only Tibetan language. Then I can help the people who know only Tibetan. That's why, you know, uh, English is very popular language in the world. So I thought, okay, I must learn English to help others. Also, I, uh, my dream is to translate the Tibetan Buddhist philosophy into English. Because uh, my Tibetan is very good, I can say like that. And because I studied Tibetan grammar and poetry for, you know, the many years from great masters. 
from Dipungoma Monastery, also Namtuli Monastery, also, uh, you know, um, Kurda Monastery. Monastery. Yeah. Also, I, you know, the, I received, I studied pottery uh, in the Kurda Tata Monastery. You know, my uh, teacher passed away. His name is uh, Amkar Lohzna Jamso. So that's why, anyway, um, maybe my activity is good. So I I am confident to translate Buddhist philosophy into English after I improve my English well. So that's why I choose to study English. Before, when I was studying mm -hmm. Buddhist philosophy and monasteries, uh, I was thinking to study Buddhist philosophy, no, I'm sorry, English, but I couldn't because one, I didn't have money to study English. If you want to study English, then you have to go outside of monastery to English. You have to pay, you know, have to rent house, pay for the class, you have to eat, you know, the, the, you have to pay for anything. So I didn't have any money to study uh, English. Then uh, another reason I didn't have time, but uh, uh, those uh, foundation help, you know, me to study English. So I never ever forget for their kindness, for their help me. Because uh, uh, otherwise maybe I, I couldn't you know, get opportunity to study English. And because I examined Buddhist philosophy about, uh, uh, you know, writing and uh, speech. And then I got uh, scholarship. Yeah. Then from Kinsey Fond Foundation, yes. Yes, from Kinsey yeah. Foundation. So Kinsey Foundation helped me to English. So but uh, also I studied English very hard. When I was studying English, I, you know, the half thought many times like that, I mustn't waste time. One, you know, the time is very important. Two, Kenzie Foundation is paying a lot of money for me to study English. Then three, my dream is to help others, to translate with the philosophy into English, to teach with the philosophy for others. I mean, you know, the, uh, I'm not interested to spread our religion in the world, but in my experience, Buddha's teaching is not just religion, it's universal. So it's philosophy. So it benefits for everybody, include, you know, the unbeliever, non-religion. So because it benefits for our daily life, especially these days, it's very, very important because nowadays almost people are thinking too much. That's why they have lots of suffering. So Buddha's <clears throat> teaching teach us how remove our negative thought, how make, you know, be happy, peaceful, you know, always, you know, it teaches like that. So many people focus on, you know, uh, external happiness, external peace, but almost of them don't know how to get internal happiness, internal peace. That's why they are getting lots of suffering. So if they, you know, study Buddha's teaching or Buddhist philosophy, then really I hope they can get you know, internal peace and internal happiness, then their life will be great. Otherwise, it's very difficult. 
which is a uh, again beautiful summary of our talk today. Uh, from your talk uh, today, I couldn't help but think of a key word, which is broad-mindedness or open-mindedness. Firstly, you were open. You are open to all sects of uh, Tibetan Buddhism and even Buddhism at large. And secondly, you are also open not just to um, believers of Buddhism, but also to non-believers. Not uh, not only to Tibetans, but you also want to share your precious knowledge and wisdom of Buddhist Buddhism with people of other nationalities. That's how you choose to study English. So with this key note of broad mindedness, uh, we as Romsom Buddhist Channel really wish to have you in the near future to share with us more of your wisdom and experience in the near future. Thank you very much, Ranjan Pai. Thank you very much, you. Thank yeah, you very much. Yeah,